and welcome to Law and Order. My name is Martia Umar. Thank you for joining us. Landlord and tenant problems are among the most contentious after issues of land ownership. And the reason is sometimes confusing or obvious depending on the situation. The interests and concerns of both categories are usually divergent or opposed to one another. One tends to wonder why this is often so and what can be done to reduce or eliminate it. In the Federal Capital Territory, tenants go through a lot. I'm not striking that landlords do not go through a lot because when you hear stories from other people, you wonder why all of this is happening. You know, in the hands of the landlord, tenants go through a lot. So this video I'm about to show you gives an insight on what some of the problems uh, the tenants face in the hands of hands, uh, house owners in the Federal Capital Territory. All you have to just do is stay where you are and take a look. Abuja, Nigeria's capital, witnesses a huge influx of people into the city on a yearly basis. This migration creates huge housing challenges. There's a large difficulty in getting rental accommodation in the city centre. As the prices are so exorbitant that low-income earners cannot afford them, leading to many houses in the city centre unoccupied. The unoccupied apartments has given rise to some fake agents who give out this apartments half the intended price, in most cases without the knowledge of the house owners. That is the case for these tenants and the recounts the experiences. I was, I got this place through an agent and they told me the caretaker was there around. So all through, the agent and the caretaker and I, we were all communicating phone because of the location where they asked is they were competition so I just felt which I should transfer since everybody's looking give me the agent account the owner's account number let me make transfer so I made transfer so when I spoke to the caretaker which is Abu Bakr he said it's not in time when it comes formal arrangement will be made that means giving me the tenancy agreement and all that so I moved in, mixed, made some repairs, and all this while we communicating. Okay, have you know, are you not back from your trip? He said, um, I'm coming weekend, weekend. So eventually, when he eventually came, I asked him of the tenancy agreement. He said he's going to just call and boost that uh, he's going to call his lawyer to come and so. Uh, Prior upon six months of ten years, I, just, I felt since I've been here, nobody has come to disturb me about who are you. So I just felt relaxed. And when my rent got expired, I renewed. March this year, they called me that the owner is going to make use of the property. <laughs> I just laughed because my, the owner cannot make use of property that I have paid for the rent. So within June, July this year, another phase came that him and Abubakar, which is Abiodu by name, that they are all partners in this same property. So what happened now, Abiodu said, okay, him and Abubakar came and said, ask Abubakar, did you collect money from me? I said, yes. He said, Abubakar said, yes. He said, how much? He told him the amount. Now Abubakar, Abiodu made a refund to me and said, okay, his boys is going to make loose scout around since he's in two properties to get an accommodation for me. But it, be that at it me, between that July to December, which one come first? I should try and get a place, which is in my head is ideal because I, I, know, I know a little bit about what the law says regarding situation like this. So I felt July to December is fair to actually get a place. I'm not around, I entered the city. So I had a call that there was a people, it's the agent and some people came to the house. They blocked my, uh, my window and some of my properties were packed away and stolen. And we don't know the aim of this thing. Don't know what is the aim because I knew my money 
I paid my money, 200,000. And although, let's say, if we break a law, we should at least, we should have been given at least a notice of one to two months. But nothing has happened like this. We'll just, I just had a, a story that this is what is happening while I'm inside the city, inside the water. Then I came back, immediately when I came, my window was removed. I entered my room. Many of my properties were taken away. I will not know what is the aim of this thing. So I checked inside my room, as I told you earlier, many of my properties were stolen. I asked them, they said, no one entered, but immediately when I entered, because I'm the owner of the room, and I found many of my properties were took away. And this thing uh, is irresponsible, because, like I said earlier, let's say we break a law, or we make some, or we offended something, at least we should have noticed that you are living. Let's say we didn't pay our money. We are living, or you are living this house for some sort of thing that has happened. But no any information, no any alert, just this is, this is what has occurred. And when I come, I talk to my neighbors. Yes, I she's one of my neighbors. When she told me, I just say, they are not here for any operation, but they are here to stool. Okay, welcome back to the show. And uh, we are still on the program, Law and Order. Someone once told me that the principal solution to this is to ensure that your tenancy agreement contains terms that deal with the above issues in a way that is fair to both parties. I'm talking about the video we just played. And that is why on the show today we will be discussing or be looking at rather the tenancy agreement. And to discuss this, I'm not a legal practitioner, so I need a legal practitioner to educate us why that happened. I mean the video, why all of this happened and why it is important for us to have a tenancy agreement just to eliminate any bickering that might come between the landlord and the tenant. So we've been joined by Tochuku Madu Esquire. He's a founding and managing partner of David Prestige Attorneys and Solicitors with factors area in real estate, corporate law, arbitration and other alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. There are lots of um, you know, titles attached to your names, but <laughs> I think I should just leave it at that. No, no, Thank you fine. so much for joining us on Thank the program today. Thank you very today. much. Thank you. Pleasure okay, well. so um, you've seen the video, you've seen what happened transpired between the landlord and the tenant. So do you agree that the principal solution to some of these issues between the landlord and the tenant is having a tenancy agreement? Um, yeah, I would say to a very large extent, it, um, is, is a, is, it makes a lot of sense to have a tenancy agreement and our laws encourages it as well. Okay. Um, tenancy agreement gives room for both parties to, to expressly state the terms and conditions of the agreement. Yeah. It gives room for all the other um, um, agreements and the covenants of the contract to be written down there. And it's especially stated. So when there is an issue hmm. and you go to court, the court will just rely on the terms of the agreements to, you know, make their judgments and to proceed with the issue. So I can say reasonably, the tenancy agreement goes a very, very long way to resolve the term landlord and tenant issues. Okay, so uh, in that video, you know, you need a legal practitioner, and thank God you're here to analyze the situation and what happened between the agents in courts, what the um, complainant talked about, the agent or the caretaker and and the tenants what really happened what did they do wrong um on the part of the tenant mm. um i would say that he normally before you you know pay your rent you must go through the tenancy agreements that have been given to you by the landlord you go through the terms and everything stated there to make sure that you're okay with it and there is no arbitrary clause there so before you make your payments and after you make your payments, you must demand for a copy of the tenancy agreement duly signed by all the parties involved, and you must also get your payment receipts. So um, from the video, we can see that um, the tenant went ahead to make a payment without even getting the tenancy agreement mm. or requesting for a receipt. So the tenancy agreement comes before payment you, you for have, a particular house? 
oh, you, you have to go through it. Okay. You have to go through it and read all the clauses, read all the terms set out there before you make your payments. Because sometimes you may, you may read the clause hmm. and all that the landlord states there and you realize that most of them doesn't, um, you're not comfortable with most of them. So in that situation, you, you don't need to pay the rent. But after you have made the payment, it will be very disastrous to now start going through the tenancy agreement because by then you have already made the payments, you've probably signed mm. the agreement mm. and going through it is, is more like messing after that. Okay, so, um, you know, we've mentioned tenancy agreements mm. a lot yes. and that's what we're discussing today. But people might be wondering, what is tenancy agreement? What is this agreement that a lot of people have been talking about? Oh, the tenancy agreement is, is basically the is a document, okay. is an agreement that documents the obligations, the terms and the obligations, an agreement between the landlord and the tenant. So it's, it's a written document that, that has every express terms stated there. Hmm. There are terms that, that the law implies. Okay. That is the implied terms. Okay. Whether or not it's stated in the agreement, it is implied by the law and is enforceable. So what are some of these terms that yeah, the some of law these terms, implies? Like, um, the, you have to pay your rent. Okay. The law implies that you must pay your rent. Okay. The law implies that the, the, the tenants would have quiet and peaceful possession, um, peaceful use of the, the, the house. The landlord cannot dictate to him, for instance, which of the rooms to make the master's bedroom mm. or you know how to leave the house, come back, the times to leave and come back. You know. The, um, the law also implies that you should be given your statutory notices. Hmm. Just to um, digress a bit, you know, when you talked about an, um, the tenancy agreement has all of this in it, yes. some people think that you cannot um, have a tenant who is so-so and so language, who comes from this part of the country, who is a Muslim, who is hmm. a Christian. Hmm. You know, there's this question when you come for you know for renting of an apartment or leasing there's this question that the landlords ask what did caretaker like are you a muslim are you a christian mm. is that part of what is contained in the tenancy agreement no it's it's, it's not it's not um i mean the landlord is is free is his house okay. is his, um he has to have the economic value of it is his business he's free to rent to whoever he chooses to rent but it's not um there's no place in law that would require you to ask if you're a Muslim or you're a Christian or... And should that be a basis for taking someone in? It's, it's like, like I said, it's arbitrary. It's, okay. not, it's not recognized on, on the laws okay. of the land. Okay. But of course, some of these landlords go on with the practice regardless. And one can say that you're, you're as a human being, you, you can decide whoever you want to rent your house to. But then it's not, it's not, um, it's not a requirement of the law. And that does not also give the, ten the tenants or the supposed tenants cannot go to court okay. to say, oh, he didn't rent the house to me because um, I'm Muslim or I'm Christian. The landlord can rent to whoever he wants so to rent. So it's based on the landlord's discretion? Yes, but I mean, it's not, you're not supposed to, it's not, it has no place in the law, Okay. basically. All right, so is there any bill or any act that supports the tenancy agreement? Um, yeah, there are. We have the um, Tenancy Act of 2007. Okay. We also have the um, Lagos State Tenancy Laws of 2011. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they all have provisions for the tenancy agreement. Yeah, but like I said earlier, the tenancy agreement, when creating um, a lease agreement, you, you can do that orally hmm. and you can also do that in writing. Yeah, but any agreement that the term of years is three years and above hmm. it must be in writing okay it must be in writing so a tenancy relation a landlord and tenant relationship can be made without being in writing it can be orally hmm. right but the um the law advises that it should be in writing so that all terms are expressly stated out and you will have issues when when um when you're in court because the court will just rely on on, the, on terms of so agreement. i need you to state expressly what the importance of tenancy agreement is? The importance of tenancy agreement is, is it just implies due execution. It's, it's, um, due execution, it, it helps you to expressly say, oh, I want this, I do not want this. It just gives room for negotiation between the landlord and the tenant. All their terms of agreement would be expressly written down there 
and it's good. It's, it's, it can be admitted in the court as evidence because it's an agreement mm. which is binding by both parties. So to a large extent, just for the purpose of um, um, due execution and um, the court cases that, that may arise mm. from the relationship, the tenancy agreement is really important. So you've mentioned Lagos State in the course of our discussion mm -hmm. about you know, the Tenancy Act. Uh, that reminds me, is, is the tenancy or uh, tenancy laws in Lagos State kind of different from the one we find in other parts of the country? The one in Abuja is kind of different from what you find in Nasara State. Now, coming to tenancy agreement, does that differ as well? Or they're just similar documents you see everywhere? Maybe a lot of people do copy and paste. I've seen a lot of copy and paste <laughs> lately for the tenancy agreement. Does it differ? Um, the tenancy agreements, there are um, standards to drafting of the agreement which the is supposed to be one okay. like there are there are clauses and there are terms that okay. is universal oh. that must be stated there so i'm so wrong the, to say there have been a lot of copy and paste yeah um, <laughs> the copy and paste most likely would be on the statutory provisions that, okay. that must be there but you know parties are allowed to contract freely that is um they can determine what other terms that would be included on the tenancy agreement mm. Expect, irrespective of the, the statutory provisions that must be there. Okay. So that's why you, you can see um, some tenancy agreement differs from your, you, the one you have may be different from the one I have because mm. you and your landlord may agree on something that my, me and my landlord do not agree on. Mm. So that, that's it. But normally tenancy agreements, they have statutory provisions and requirements and clauses that must be there. And then the rest of it, the parties involved are free to contract, however, they want to as far as it does not um is not does not contradict the provisions of the law so does it mean that if you're writing a tenancy agreement for a shop for instance or an office space it's kind of different from the kind of tenancy agreement you write for someone who is renting an apartment yes because the the particulars of the properties now would be different okay. if, if, if it's an apartment you can have a four or five bedroom apartments and it must be described as such on the tenancy agreement but if it's a rent then you can it can be by square meters or however and it's described as such in the in the tenancy agreement that you have mm. yeah because the um you have for residential purpose and for the shop i can i would tell that it's for commercial mm -hmm. it's for commercial purpose mm -hmm. yeah but then the, the statutory requirements of the quick notice and everything are all the same mm -hmm. for one year um, tenancy the quick notice is supposed to be for six months for one month, it's supposed to be for one month, and for six months, it's supposed to be for three months. So you give them three months notice, prior notice, ahead of the expiration of the rent for a six months tenancy. So those ones would be the same, irrespective of whether it's, it's, the, um, the, it's for commercial purpose or for residential purpose. Okay. So if you're just joining us, this is Law and Order and Trust Television. We'll continue discussions after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show and if you're just joining us, okay, you've missed a lot, but not to worry. If you want to watch this episode again, all you have to do is get back to YouTube, our YouTube um, page, uh, which is displayed on your screen right now. Search for Law and Order, Trust Television, and it will be displayed. Um, this episode is the tenancy agreement. That's what we're discussing. And for more information, for questions, for comments, just send them to the social media handles displayed on your screen. And we've been having this discussion with Tocha Kumado Esquire. He's been educating us a lot about a tenancy agreement. And he did an analysis of a video we played earlier of um, tenants complaining about what must have transpired between them, the caretaker and the landlord. So we'll get back to the discussion. But before then, we want to say thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Uh, so well. now, um, getting to tenancy agreements, uh, we've been discussing that. But what is um, contained in a tenancy agreement? Well, the, um, the basic and the standard um, uh, things that should be contained in tenancy agreements, you have the full particulars of the parties involved. Okay. By particulars, I mean the full name, hmm. the address, um, the email address, and the phone numbers. And then you have a full description of the property. If it's um, a two-bedroom flat, if it's a duplex, how many rooms duplex, if it has a boy's quarter, 
the location it has of, to be stated it must be clearly. expressly stated okay clearly. yes and you know if, if it's the full building that you're renting it must be stated if it's just maybe one part of the building it must be stated as well the tenancy agreement should contain the commencement dates hmm. of the tenancy it must also contain the dates at which the agreement was signed okay because sometimes the agreement may be signed for instance today hmm. but the tenancy would commence maybe next month hmm. so it must state these two dates must be expressly stated it must also contain the term of years if you're renting for two years three years four years it must be hmm. included it must contain also the rental value the amount of the rent the mode of payment if you want by cash or bank transfer the account number must be there hmm. it also contains the um a provision for the where you serve the statutory notices okay. yes whether okay. in the house it also contains um the process for determining the rent that is for ending the rent if it's inflation by time inflation of time or however you want to end the rent it must also be stated there so now, it's important that i ask this question you know when this disagreement between the landlord and tenant comes in mm -hmm. the problem of um you know I know my right as a tenant. I know my right as a landlord comes mm. in. And most times they, say, they tell you that I will be taking you to court because everything uh, has not been stated in the tenancy agreement. Like you said, it can be done orally or in a written form. But there are exceptions to that when it's more than three years, according yes. to what you said, yes. you have to be, it has to be in a written form, so, right? Yes. And sometimes people have this misunderstanding. There's a tenancy agreement and you read it or some people don't even care to read. And a signature was, uh, uh, was appended on that document. At the end of the day, they're having problems with, oh, you are to leave um, before this. And then you realize that all of this is contained in the tenancy agreement. Now, for people who read all of this and feel that it's on black and white, changes cannot be made to it. Can you do any changes to a tenancy agreement given to you by a landlord? Or maybe um, bring the landlord, have a discussion with them and see if there are changes made. Can that happen? Yes, that can happen. Okay. A provision for the changes would be included uh, as one of the clauses in the tenancy agreement. Okay. And it must be done mutually. It okay. can be unilaterally done. The landlord and the tenant must come together to make the changes. Okay. So it, it can, of course, it, it, can, it can be changed as far as they both consent to such changes. Okay. And you know, I was going to add, based on the video, the, the police is, um, by our laws, the police is not supposed to be involved in um, um, civil matters. Because it, uh, the landlord tenant uh, matter is yes, a civil matter. Yes, it's a civil matter. matter. Okay. So the extent that the police can be involved, um, like the video is a clear case of a, a rental fraud. Hmm. So, and fraud is, is a criminal offense in the Nigerian laws. Hmm. So the extent the police can be involved in that matter is when there is fraud, to investigate the fraud, probably all the activities that preceded the payment of the rent and help um, the tenant get whoever that took the rent from him, bring him in for questioning and probably make a report that will be submitted. But the police doesn't have any business evicting tenants or getting so much involved with um, tenants and landlord relationships. Okay, before we play a video of uh, the police um, <laughs> saying something about mm. their involvement in tenants and landlords matters, uh, I would just like to ask, who gives the tenancy agreement? Is it the lawyer? Is it the landlord? It's the landlord. Okay. It's the landlord. The landlord can draft the agreement himself, uh, but you know, in practice, is 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 the lawyer of the landlord that drafts the agreement because you know lawyers would know the clauses and how to involve all those statutory clauses and all that that mm. the, 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 the um, landlord may not know but according to the laws is the landlord that has the responsibility to draft the um, tenancy agreement and present it to the tenant okay so in a case where we have um, people um, saying that they've been cheated, landlords saying that everything is in a tenancy agreement and in a case where we have landlords selling their buildings and then the rent is, is still very active, what happens then? What do the tenants have to do? Do they have to have an agreement, a mutual agreement that they're going to leave or they have to stay till their rent expires? Yes, there must be such agreements. Um, the, the landlord cannot unilaterally sell the property during the pendency of a rent. Mm. 
if he wants to sell the property, he must notify the tenant and their rent must expire before he does that. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't, when you, when you pay a rent on a building, the landlord cannot just sell. Mm -hmm. Even if he sells it, the rent continues mm -hmm. to run until it expires. Probably the, the new owner of the building would, there will be an ag agreement between the landlord, the tenants and the owner of the building to probably let them stay to the end of they the rent. They cannot be evicted at they can, will. They cannot be evicted. All right. Once so, you have paid your rent, your rent, will, as far as you have kept by the obligation stated on the contract, and you have played your part properly, you, you won't be evicted. Okay, so we'll go take the video where the police spoke about uh, their involvement with tenant and landlord matters. This landlord issues may look like a civil matter, but uh, it is when we intervene that we can be able to determine if they are civil matter and then we advise accordingly. Uh, sometimes maybe issues like trespass, you know, there are issues of trespass again. And in our, our police art section two, uh, give us, uh, there are some laws of uh, alternative uh, dispute or area, yes, mm -hmm. all those things are involved in it. So it is when you intervene that you'll be able to discover if this is a case of civil, if it's a civil case which will be uh, uh, directed or advised accordingly or it's not. Okay, welcome back. I, I just wish we could go on talking about the tenancy agreement because it is a very, very important document just like um, Tochukumadu Esquire has stated on the program today, but I'm sorry we do not have at, at that time. But before we go, we'd like to say thank you so much You're for much educating welcome. us on Thanks the tenancy agreement and uh, you know a little bit of the tenant's rights and the landlord's rights because <laughs> when you come to think of it, you know their rights are very important. Okay, that brings us to this week's episode of Law and Other. But until then, remember that ignorance is not an excuse in a court of law. So to watch this program again and to leave your comments and questions, just follow the link and uh, the comment section on the social media handles. Those with all of that, drop them there and we'll take it from there. My name is Martia Umar. Thank you for being a part of the show. I'll see you next time. Thank you.